Today we celebrate, but tomorrow the work begins. In 2010, one of the world's smallest nations won the right to host the world's biggest sporting event, the 2022 World Cup. This is going to be a legacy. All eyes would now turn to Qatar, the desert nation that has become an oasis of affluence. If you want to make money, Qatar is a place to do it. I love it. And its beating heart is a place like no other. The Pearl, an astonishing man-made island where all that glisters is almost certainly gold. It's not easy to build all of this from scratch. In this series, we delve inside this world within a world. Right now, everyone wants to be in Qatar. A magnet for sporting superstars. I can feel the energy, I can see the excitement. We'll meet the locals. Rolls Royce is one of my favorite cars. <laughs> and those who keep paradise ticking along. Organizing the World Cup proves that we are a small country, can do big things. And soon, this normally tranquil place will be faced with daunting and unfamiliar challenges. And the pressure is on for everyone. There is actually no chance that we can be delayed at all. We've got to open in time for the World Cup. Welcome to the Pearl. For over 200 years, Goodwood has been home to the most British of horse racing events. This is the highlight of the year. Glorious Goodwood brings a lot of fun and excitement, and uh, yeah, we have to be here. We have to see what get involved. But now, Glorious Goodwood goes by another name, the Cata Goodwood Festival. Distinguished guests, welcome to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 lunch here at Goodwood House. Please welcome to the stage, Ambassador of the State of Qatar to the UK, His Excellency, Mr. Farhad Al Atia. It's an opportunity to exercise the soft power of sport. Qatar and the UK, like all countries represented here today, believe in the power of sports to bring people together. We look forward to welcoming you to Qatar and for what will be a historic event for football. Among the guests is England footballing legend Michael Owen. Yeah, I've been fortunate to play in three World Cups, and it's the pinnacle. It's the absolute pinnacle of, of your career. Every four years, one trophy is won by one set of players, and, and that's the beauty of it. It's so difficult to win. It's everything to win something for your country, to win the biggest prize of all. As much as, as racing takes centre stage this week, with the Qatar sponsorship, um, I think everybody's already looking you know, forward a, a couple of months to, uh, to what's going to be a, a huge tournament, a huge event around the world. One promising cold today is Mugadir, part of the Qatari-owned Al Shakab stable, trained by Richard Hannan. Mugadir is hoping to make his mark in the first race at 1.50. <laughs> And they're off for this coral beaten by a length three bet. Surrey missed the grey on the wide outside Mugadir. On the far side, Mandobi, Secret State drifting towards the centre of the race course, coming near side. Secret State, the all blue Inverness tries to stay on. Maxon on the far side. It's Secret State near side of Maxon. And Secret State pulls up. The King George V win. The Royal Ascot victory. What an improving horse. I was delighted. Yeah, he ran a super race there. He's only a baby, he's only three. But he's very big and he'll be a gorgeous horse next year. So if you're here next year, you'll probably see him winning next year. I've trained a few winners here for Alfred Cap and they've been amongst my best days in racing. Qatar is probably the name on everyone's lips at the moment. You know, massive, probably the big, biggest event in the world is, is coming up there and uh, might get a couple of tickets. You never know. It may not have been Qatar's day on the turf, but for His Excellency Hassan Al Thawadi, Secretary General of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, the real prize came when Qatar got to host the tournament. The 2nd of December for me uh, was a very emotional moment. I expected the US to win, 
So there was a slight shock, and you can see the shock on my face. There's a very famous picture where you can see me kind of rooted, trying to figure out what exactly happened. But since then, it's been a great journey. I mean, it's been a very difficult journey at times, but I think through the challenges, we're able to grow. This World Cup is a great opportunity to build cultural bridges. We are fun-loving people. We have a great sense of humor. Our culture is very, very deep. Uh, and we want to showcase that to the rest of the world. It's going to be a great time, and we look forward to having everybody there in Qatar during November, December. Are you ready? We're ready. Three thousand miles away, just off the coast of Qatari capital, Doha, and the Pearl Island is doing its best to make sure it really is ready for the World Cup. This multi-billion dollar man-made island is a gleaming citadel of luxury residences and high-end businesses, and will be a go-to destination for visitors. Soon, it'll be home to a new luxurious yacht club. But first, building work needs to be completed. There is no room to slip through. Yes. Not even a week. It's yes. very tight. Yes. As you see, I mean, the World Cup is happening. We definitely cannot afford what we allowed you for before. Yes. Right? Yes. You have to finish by yes. hook or by crook. Yes. You have two weeks or three weeks, but you keep on promising me and now you will finish it. We're counting on you really to finish it. Yes. And now, in the late summer, Ibrahim Al Othman. Hey. President and CEO of the UDC, master developer of the Pearl Island, has arrived on site. The work is being overseen by a vast team of contractors and builders. And progress isn't quite where Ibrahim is hoping it would be. My concern is that you'll be installing parquet or madriyesh. Frankly speaking, I'm not too happy with the progress itself. We should have been at this stage like two months ago. We're late on the project. We have like around 400 people working on this project, day and night, trying to complete this before the World Cup. It has to be completed. It has to be. If it isn't? It will be. <laughs> While the World Cup represents a daunting deadline for those behind the scenes, for the public across the Pearl and beyond, it's an opportunity to go football mad. Brazilian superstar Neymar is even in town, hosting his annual Red Bull Five-a-Side tournament. The Brazil men and women's teams win, and the prize is the chance to play against Neymar himself. While Neymar and his ilk will be battling in the stadiums around Doha, for many, the Pearl will provide a base during their visit. They might even find themselves here, in the Viva Baria district. Spanish interior designer Alicia Perez is making sure that visiting footballers will stay in the style to which they are accustomed. We're going to the 17th floor, where we have the premium apartments, we have the duplex. This is a very important moment in the building because we are finalizing the, the final touches. Be careful that the doors are not damaged, you know. Rectify the walls so we don't have this kind of cracks. And here over there, there is another tile that is broken. This has to be changed, OK? Also, please make the sockets that are level. They are not straight. We are aiming for people who can afford a luxury space. So it can be football player, I don't know, or maybe more. These apartments, we have, uh, I think our wow element will be the, the wallpaper that we want to use. A little bit like tropical, floral feeling. <laughs> and of course, I think the best artwork that we have in these uh, apartments is the, the series. Having a view like this, you can see like you are one of the best countries, I would say, in the world. Once completed, the apartment can be yours for a pretty penny. 
provided Neymar doesn't beat you to it first. As well as a golden PR opportunity for Qatar, the World Cup is a marketing godsend for those selling real estate on the Pearl. Are you looking for a property for yourself? Are you looking for something to invest in? German-born Leon Drescher works for Qatar Sotheby's International Realty. To make it a nice drive, you know. And on his roster is a series of luxury apartments in the heart of the Pearl. I've been here now for a bit longer than six months, but always had the urge to leave Germany at a certain point. If I'm doing a good job, it doesn't matter how old I am. It doesn't matter if I'm 60 or 19. Leon's goal today is to polish his sales patter as he gears up to sell the brand new apartments in one of the Pearl's most exclusive addresses. So right here, we are in one of the two bedroom apartments. This one is a type A. It's going to include things like the artwork, the things you see in the apartment, like the carpets. So what you get is pretty much higher standard. You're going to find great balcony views from all of the three rooms. The finishes here really are top end, as good as, as it gets, right? Going into the master bedroom, very important to mention. I mean, you get your initials stitched into the linens. You get everything you can imagine. Look at it, it's just a nice place. If you fancy it, there's also a three-bedder on his books. Open living room, spacious. And this one has a private pool. Just look at it. It's just like, to me, it's a no-brainer why you would want to live here, right? The three-bedroom townhouses price is around 2.2 million US dollars. With the apartments built, let the customers now come. The apartments are part of a much bigger development. The Alphadan Group hasn't just built a new 193 suite hotel, it's created a brand new island, the St. Regis Massa Arabia Island. Today, it's the first day of a countdown to the opening of the St. Regis Massa Arabia Island on the Pearl. We've been working on this opening for at least a year now and we're so excited to actually see it coming to life and to welcome our first guests. Maha Burachi is Director of Sales and Marketing. And with the grand opening looming, it's now all down to the finest of details. Shortly, we'll be presenting the uniforms. This is the first day that we reveal these uniforms to our team members. Are you all excited? Yeah! yeah. It gives me great pleasure and pride to present to you the spectacular uniforms. So take it, guys. Have fun. I don't know if you loved it, but I loved it myself. They looked exquisite, and they will be serving royalty. They're ready to serve Sunday, royalty. Man. Are you ready? We're ready. We were born ready. <laughs> the Pearl is run by the United Development Company. And from his perch in the headquarters, Ibrahim is able to keep an eye on the big picture. With the World Cup approaching, I'm telling you, it's been, uh, I wouldn't say a nightmare, but it's been a pressure on everybody involved. If we are not under pressure, we don't perform. I like to be under pressure, 
then I can perform to the best of my ability. Yes, it's very tight, but we have a few projects that I know that we will finish before uh, the World Cup and it will be ready to receive all the visitors. The net, covering it, needs to be cleaned. On the ground, it's down to people like Abdul Latif Al Yafe, Executive Director of Public Services, to make sure that Ibrahim's will is being implemented down to the last playground slide. I'm just uh, going my routine uh, drive around. I do this uh, twice a week, make sure that uh, everything is well uh, maintained, especially in the common areas. Uh, to ensure that we are maintaining the prestige and the lifestyle that we have for the Pearl Island. Abdul Latif has been tasked with ensuring that a new landmark on the Pearl is delivered on time. A town clock currently being made in Germany. The clock has to be uh a luxury clock uh, compared to a world-wide uh, standard. This project is one of many other projects that we are working on uh, and we have to complete uh, prior the World Cup. Definitely this is putting a lot of pressure uh, on me and on my team. The clock is destined to be sighted at the gateway to the Pearl, on the Porto Arabia roundabout, turning it into a truly magical roundabout. It is very key to have tower clock in the middle here that can be seen by tens of thousands of visitors and also people working around this area. Even though the eight state-of-the-art football stadiums in Qatar are brand new, football has long been a passion in this part of the Gulf. In this largely teetotal nation, it tends to be a civilized affair. Elsewhere, the culture can be very different. And crowd control is one more thing on Ibrahim's plate. Morning. You made it. <laughs> to help preserve the peace, they've turned to a top British security consultant for help, Anita Spink, veteran of His Majesty's Armed Forces. So that will be formal training, but will continue throughout with on-the-ground training and mini exercises to test people's understanding of the training and to be able to deal with different situations. And then dealing with individuals who've been drinking and noise disturbances are uh, the main concerns. Football fans are coming in large numbers who will be drinking alcohol. When you mix the hot weather and alcohol into the situation, then sometimes people can become more fractious and situations can escalate. The security guards currently aren't used to dealing with, so it's preparing them for the difference in the situations they may have to deal with. For Qatar generally, and the Pearl in particular, it's essential that the World Cup generates positive PR. They need to always be addressing the crowd in a very professional manner Absolutely. and smiling face. Absolutely. They need, don't need to be aggressive. That's what we're going to work on and how they effectively communicate with people, explaining to them the better way to approach people. Here you have multinational from all over the world coming into Qatar. So we just want to make sure these guests understand Absolutely. the laws, but in a very subtle and very pleasing way. 100%. We will prepare as much as we possibly can. There's always going to be the unexpected, but I have confidence that by that time the team will be well prepared and able to deal with the situation.
Over at the St. Regis, Director of Sales, Maha, is getting ready for a visitor. Zuhur al-Fardan is now working on multiple projects within the hospitality sector. So, ladies, are we ready? Yes. Good. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? Alhamdulillah. We're in the floating stage just before opening. I come almost once a week with the uh, hospitality team, so like with Sarkis and Nadir. It's funny because we see and we do the snagging and we're like, this needs to change and this needs to change. So it's very wonderful to see the final product, but it's also nice to have seen the details that went into it. Uh, these are our trolleys. Uh, you've got some carpeting being rolled out. It's all a part of the opening experience. Even the trolleys are nice, huh? They're they not are the beautiful, actually, yeah. <laughs> These are our beautiful art pieces. The art pieces are really beautiful. What we'd like to do is fly in Damien Hurst. We'd like to fly him in and organize a midnight supper. My father doesn't like empty walls, so whatever empty wall we find, there will be a new painting, a new art piece. It's always nice to have something on a white yeah. wall. Because it's such a stunning piece, yeah. The piano that I learned how to play piano on, uh, they're moving it over here. It's a very old piece. It's a Steinway, Akid. Uh, it's not a Steinway, I believe it's a Steiner, which is a German uh, piano man manufacturer. Okay. But we have as well two Steinways at home. Do you have to come and play here? Uh, when it's empty, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> we like to reinvent luxury constantly. So always finding something better, finding something more luxurious, and uh, always striving for development, whether that's in uh, materialistic, like uh, physical manifestation of things, or just within ourselves and within the people in the company. It's always good to grow and to achieve something better. Mm -hmm. We continue the countdown. Yeah. <laughs> and open on time. Exactly. It was a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pleasure is mine. <laughs> Bye. Bye. As well as amassing real estate, Zuchor's father, Omar Alfadan, is an avid collector of classic motors. He likes Aston Martin so much that he purchased the franchise. I think this is going to be a an, an good addition for our collection. Absolutely. And now he's picking up the latest car in his collection, the V12 Aston Martin Speedster. Wow, very interesting. What a beautiful combination. One of only 88 made and retailing for around $1 million. This car is an iconic car and it follows the design of one which won the Le Mans race in 1959. Even if you want to drive it slow without being on a track, which you can do, the helmets are not in a location where they will create some noise for you. I'm going to try today without helmet, hopefully. Beautiful, thrilling uh, sound. You feel so free when you drive such a car with no roof, with no canvas, no wind uh, deflecting. house matches this car. Yeah, where are we? Tell me about this. This is actually a three houses being connected together. I built them for my daughters, so we got a very talented architect. And on the seaside, you see everything is glazed on three floors. And all terraces are connected for the three villas.
The Pearl cost around $15 billion to build and is above all intended to be a place that residents can truly call home. It means that the island, built from scratch in just 10 years, has become a magnet for leading architects from across the world, as well as homegrown talent. The person that uh, owns this house, who happens to be my dear brother, Salah, he is a banker, but uh, he has passion for art. Ibrahim al Jeda is one of Qatar's most distinguished architects, who has designed numerous residences on the Pearl, including this one. This is a Spanish artist. It's a beautiful steel, uh, made of steel, of creating these beautiful uh, cubes. He pays as much attention to what's on the inside as the outside. Is that mirror? Yeah, it is. It is mirror. Sometimes uh, the interior designer will play a role in selecting what goes with what. Sometimes I will try to impose my own collection and then we'll have a big argument with the interior designer because art should also belong, belong in, the, uh, in the context of the interior design. Being on the beach, sometimes also you would want some artifacts that reflects your vicinity of, of, the, of the sea. How are we able to pick this up? It's an antique uh, river. Oh, you want to pick it up? Yeah. Are you able to show it to me? Should I? I don't know how heavy it is. It's not heavy. He'll kill me if I break it. Oops. <laughs> oh, it has a it has a base even. I mean, that's a dream Riva antique boat. <laughs> yeah. It'll be nice to have the real one. I have a similar one, uh, another Riva uh, miniature. Even in my office, I, I love these boats quite a bit. This is. Uh, Contemporary Arabic art, uh, a famous Algerian artist, the way it's done like in 3D and having the Arabic calligraphy, and I think it's, it's a beautiful masterpiece. Even though Salah collects art, all our brothers have a decent collection of uh, contemporary Arab artists and international art. I think this is how houses should look like. House of dreams. Ibrahim and his brother aren't alone in their passion for art. In 2015, world records were broken when a Gauguin was sold to Qatari collectors for around $300 million. Billions more have been spent on other iconic works of art. In London, Qataris also own Harrods, Valentino, the Shard, the Ritz, and Claridge's. While in France, they own Paris Saint-Germain Football Club. They have stakes in Uber, Barclays, British Airways, Volkswagen, Audi, Bentley, and even the Empire State Building. And they're hiring talent from across the globe including one of Germany's most prestigious makers of clocks. Almost 3,000 miles from Qatar, in the Black Forest of Germany, work has been ongoing on the 15-meter-high, multi-million-dollar town clock, destined to be the centerpiece of the pearl. Very nice weather right now with rain. Of course, no rain right now in Qatar. Fresh off the plane, Abdul Latif is on his way to inspect the clock in person and report back to Ibrahim. We are here to make sure that the, the clock is tested and ready for installation. The work is being accomplished by one of Germany's most famous clock manufacturers, Perot founded in 1860. And a Perot is still in charge. Johannes is the MD and great-grandson of the founder. OK. Here, things are prepared for you. Wow, that's great. What is the material? It's this? a plexiglass. It's the highest quality of plexiglass we can get. With so much pressure to deliver the perfect timepiece, 
Abdul Latif is leaving nothing to chance. Okay. This one, this one's supposed to be a little bit like this one. Like this, okay. You see the screws, they don't look nice. They have to be painted. Our ambient temperature and the weather is totally different than in Europe. Our goal is to have highest quality. We only use metal gearings, bronze bearings for a long lifetime of the clocks. The high quality was increased in this case, especially for, for this project. Parrot are famous for their exquisitely engineered mechanics. But Abdul Latif and his bosses have requested a more up-to-date approach. This is now just the, the hour strike, and now the, the Westminster. Let's start, start again. It was too less loudness. Uh, and this can be configured and changed, modified, in case we want to modify it at side. Yeah. Something, yes. it's possible. Yes. yes. The finished clock will comprise four faces, two with Roman numerals and two in Arabic. So here, this is how it will look like. Yes. It's beyond my expectation. Beautiful design and also the most important is, say, the execution. <laughs> I sent the photo to CEO. Ah, yeah, OK. And he's happy. He said, he said it's amazing. So we are happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It's going to be ready, right? For, for, for sure, the, for sure. Definitely. The World Cup is a sort of coming-of-age party for Qatar as a nation, a declaration of its modernity and eagerness to embrace the world. As one of the smallest states in the world, Qatar is surrounded by much bigger neighbors. One image above all symbolizes the spirit of the Qatari people, a heroic depiction of the Emir, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamed Al Thani. It's the work of local artist Ahmed Al Madhid. I want to express my love of the Emir, and I want to tell them he's the glorious. I want to tell that this is the one who we are proud of. This is the printed number zero that I printed to myself. The original is uh, at the National Museum. The picture became known as Glorious Tamim and appeared on billboards across the country as a symbol of pride, patriotism, and devotion to the Emir. I want to show you the Tamim al-Majd. The big canvas is here. For sure, when I see this one, I, I, I feel proud of myself, proud of my country, proud of what we did, what we are doing, proud of the future, what we are going to do, proud of the citizens, proud of the Qataris, that what all together. Now, glorious Tamim is prominent on the pearl an emblem of how Qatar is flinging open its doors to the world. In order to ensure that the Pearl stays peaceful during the World Cup, around 600 additional security guards have been drafted in. And today, Anita is teaching some of them crowd control theory. OK, so the aim of today's lesson is to discuss and understand the process of de-escalation. We're doing a refresher training and doing uh, subjects that we wouldn't necessarily normally have to go into so much depth as, such as conflict management, de-escalation, because those topics are not as fresh in their minds as normal. What's this guy doing? Pointing, OK? It looks angry, doesn't it? If you are stood pointing at this, don't go here! Like you're, threatening someone. you're threatening them, aren't you? And if somebody feels threatened, what are they likely to do? 
Some might uh, react. Yeah, they might react. And you could be causing a situation that wasn't there in the first place. What about personal space? Let's have a volunteer. It's time for Anita to try out a bit of Great British role play. OK, so as I start talking to Yasin, what's happening now? How's he feeling? Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to consider taking no action, watching it from a distance, watching body language, making sure that it's not escalating, OK? We've been training for quite a while now and the training will continue all the way up to the World Cup with different progressive training, on-the-job training, etc. as well. Can you get it all done in time? Of course. Letting people enjoy themselves because that's what they've come for, for a holiday and to enjoy themselves. Good. In the unlikely event that there is any trouble, one man above all will be first to know about it, Ibrahim at the UDC. As well as a 360-degree view of the entire island, he has 3,000 CCTV cameras to keep tabs on what's happening on the Pearl, including his pet projects. This is my office. This is where I monitor the main uh, progress. Here we could see the, um, uh, the Yacht Club with the last remaining scaffolding right at the entrance. So this gives me a quick snap uh, shot at what's going on there at the uh, main projects that we have. This helps me out when I see that there is any delay or hiccups. It's almost seeing and monitoring everything. Yeah. So how often are you looking at these screens? All the time, all the time. One thing sure to catch Ibrahim's attention is his town clock, which after months in the making, has made its way from the Black Forest in Germany to the Pearl. We have no key. The only thing missing now is a key to access the freight box. We have no key because it's not our lock. That uh, seems to be the situation. German engineer Berthold Rapp is here to ensure things go smoothly. We need a, a, a cutter, a, a steel cutter. The key we brought with us is uh, for a lock inside this case, not for this one. Wow, he got it. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's look. Seems to be good. Let's open. It was 30 days on the way, and we are happy that it's here. It has survived the journey very good, I think. And we are proud that it's here. It isn't long before Ibrahim gets wind of the clock's arrival. And he's brought along Abdullah oh, Teeth. It's completely <laughs> fine. It's awesome. it's completely fine. Is she OK? No problem. How many days will it take you, you think? We are planning at the moment. We are here five days, six nights, and should be enough, we hope, if nothing goes wrong. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Elsewhere on the Pearl, the hour has arrived for another grand unveiling, the St. Regis Massa Arabia Resort. And to mark the occasion, sales director Maha has made sure to observe an important custom. Every St. Regis property has to have a, a signature Bloody Mary. The Bloody Mary was created by a very popular bartender in St. Regis, New York. And one of our traditions is that we create a signature Bloody Mary for every St. Regis property. 
And the one here is called the red pearl. And uh, the, the main ingredient is thyme, because it's a Middle Eastern flavor. And why do we call it the red pearl? It's inspired by the, the sparkling sunset on the pearl that you will be seeing while you're sipping the, the Bloody Mary. Tonight we have the handover ceremony and uh, the handover ceremony is where we hand over the keys to the hotel uh, and, and this is where the hotel is officially up and running and operational. It is momentous because we've been working so many years on opening this product, this spectacular island and, and now this is it, we're opening it finally. Our baby is coming to uh, life. It's like a, a new baby that's being born. Uh, it's exactly the same feeling. It's showtime at the St. Regis, and also a bit of a family gathering, with Omar al Fadan in attendance, along with his daughter, Zuhur. We are about to open the finest address in Doha. So, Mr. Omar and Mr. Khalil, I'd like to thank you very much for giving us this wonderful property. Tonight, we can say, finally, we are ready to open our doors for our guests. Big night, happy night. It feels like it's really a reality now. I had people telling me they have been waiting for this day and they have a breath of relief after the key has been passed, so they're very happy about it. We passed the eye of the storm. Always my father and grandfather, they're always saying that we're all one team, one family at the end of the day. While the party continues at the St. Regis, a crack team of engineers is starting an all-night shift. Their mission? To ensure that the 20-ton, state-of-the-art German town clock is installed without a hitch. So now we are going to lift the container up. The, the truck is going to go forward. Then we will put it down in the ground. And after that, we are in box for the great moment. We will see the mast and we will lift it up. It is a risky operation. <laughs> Nothing is damaged, and let's see. We have to go on and see if we stop. We nearly scratched the painting, but we could stop it in time. Nothing happened, everything is perfect. <laughs> Disaster narrowly averted. Precision German engineering prevails and order is restored. We fixed uh, the raised uh, socket from the clock, and the screws are fitting, the cables are fitting. Uh, we are very happy. We worked over a year for this, for this moment. Uh, it's a very great moment for us. It's the middle of October and the World Cup is now just four weeks away. The Pearl has a brand new hotel with exquisitely dressed staff, a newly trained security force, and soon, hopefully, it will have a yacht club. It also has a new town clock. Very happy, yes, finally. Very happy to see the clock, and I can take this uh, project as one of the projects that we have managed to complete successfully uh, and on time. For the chairman of the UDC, His Excellency Turki bin Mohammed Al-Qatar and the other creators of the Pearl, 
the World Cup is a landmark in the history of Qatar. And it's also perhaps the foundation stone of a new relationship with the rest of the world. The World Cup is the biggest event of sports in the world, maybe, and we are very excited about it. It's like a dream come true for the country, and the pearl is in the middle of this. We are hoping that whoever comes here and enjoy will come back again, will come back as visitors, as investors, as a tourist. That's something that we feel or hoping that will be part of the legacy of the World Cup. Next time, with just days before the World Cup kicks off, the rush is on to get the golf course ready. If we don't make it, then it's curtains for me. The super yachts are here. You're dealing with millions of pounds worth of boats every day. But will the Pearl's new yacht club be completed in time to welcome them? The deadline is, is very, very short right now.